Hey everybody, big welcome back. And this is my project, Who You Calling Midget, which is my 1975 Midget MG, or MG Midget rather. And today we're gonna be going over a few things I did the other day, just quickly. I didn't record for kicking stuff here. Um, I showed this repair here. Obviously this is not, you know, restoration shop quality, but, um, welded this in kind of did an ugly little bead here and on the inside is another bead and all that it's not moving anywhere that's the main thing it's solid i got my rocker on it's not welded at the bottom yet though so got this plate welded on here same thing it's not attached at the bottom but when i do the floor repair that's going to come around and into this and then uh, i'll try to strengthen up the welds there and just for the fun of it I did a little fiberglass here obviously it's just really really rough it's got to be finished properly the problem I had though was that the replacement rockers were a little bit higher or bigger profile than the factory car so you can see right here this little lip I'm gonna have to blend that probably won't be too hard because it's under the car so like when you're standing up I don't think you'll really even notice once I kind of merge the two levels together um, but when I tried to shift this up higher to make that sit up then I had a lip right here which lifted it was pushing on the fender which was actually why I ended up cutting this little part out here was so that the fender mount would fit in here just it doesn't quite fit exactly because it's higher so anyways it wouldn't allow the fender to fit proper so that's where we're at i cut this out i think i'm still just going to tack a piece in from the bottom like you know kind of use a magnet or whatever to hold it there tack it just to fill the space but and the holes i drilled for the uh fender mount it's kind of hard to see in there but i think i have a little bit of grinding to do to make it so that the mount will sit properly in there but no issue um but today what I'm planning on doing is figuring out what exactly is going to happen with the floor because the floor's rotted out as well. So as you can see in here, um, I still got obviously some more cleaning up and welding to do here, but let's uh, go ahead. But from back here, I think this looks good enough for just your average Joe. Also, disclaimer, if you've never watched any of the other videos on this, I'm just a guy that never has actually done any of this. I just decided to buy a car that needed to work, and this is where we're at. So let's jump under the car and see what we're dealing with. Okay, so things are not fantastic under here because this is all rotted out from here to here. And then this was like a little support beam or something that came across, so... Essentially, my plan will be to cut out from here and say straight across like that and over to here and remake basically a box or like, you know, a half a box, whatever, that I can hopefully bang into position and weld on and come up with something, some semblance of a floor without having to replace the whole floor. The rest of the floor is actually in good shape so like everything else in here is solid because it has been under sprayed but apparently it didn't help on this portion and then well i've got the car up on jack stands i can go ahead and at the very beginning i had uh welded on this little piece ugly welds remember i don't know how to weld i'm just kind of learning as i go but i couldn't reach because the car was too low to the ground so now i'll be able to get in there and uh fix that up so let's go ahead and get into this well unfortunately after actually making that clip and climbing under the car i realized that i can't cut the straight line i wanted to uh due to like the cross member in the car there's like a box channel thing in there so right above this rust hole is like a flat thing anyway it's part of the structure of the car, so I couldn't cut into it. The good news is the metal on the floor stays solid up until that point, so it should be a non-issue anyway with the way I'm going to be doing the repair, which obviously as of making this video is already done, 
and spoiler alert, it seems uh, pretty secure. So I'm uh, I'm all right with that. And the uh, I've actually this is the second time I had to make this video uh, part six because for whatever reason another version of it didn't work like it just wouldn't upload to YouTube so I had to remake it. But anyhow, um, while you're watching this, I'll tell you kind of a little bit about where we are because I haven't filmed everything. But just so you know, to current date where we are, the uh, one fender's all pretty well properly mounted up except for one bolt that I'm going to have to get a longer bolt. I'll explain in the video. Um, then I've also started a little bit of uh, puttering around on the body work. It's been years since I did body work, so I decided to uh, kind of in the evenings work on that a little bit here and there. And I found that uh, the red primer, which is not sandable, it was just, you know, the budget $6 a can primer, is shit. It doesn't... Uh, it, it gums up the sandpaper and it doesn't really fill up imperfections. It's just too thin. Um, so I've got myself a can of the high build sandable primer, which is like 14 bucks a can. And honestly, it's a night and day difference. And it's the, you know, it, it's a nice gray, like a battleship gray. So uh, as I get to actual priming of parts and stuff, it kind of gives you more of that satisfaction of the car coming together if that makes any sense to you guys, I don't know if it will or not. And then another thing uh, that you'll see in a future video is I didn't record what I was doing with it, but degreasing in the wheel well in behind, like, you know, where the ball joints are and everything like that. Uh, I've spent like an hour getting all the grease out of the one side. The other side is still greasy. So I'll probably do a time lapse of... Uh, scraping in that and then i picked up some degreaser stuff today to try to help with that because i see there's going to be some parts in there that i've got to replace some bushings and the tie rod ends and stuff so realistically to get in there and see what it properly needs i have to degrease it and then also when i take it in for my safety inspection which is um you know the ministry of transportation has to certify it which is just a garage we go to a Regist recognized garage for that um they they're not going to accept it uh in for inspection if it's completely caked in grease and you can't see the parts so uh regardless uh it was time to get to that and yeah so you can see my trusty cardboard and sharpie marker for making my templates so far i've been really happy with this process um I did, uh, just kind of while you're watching this, might as well talk about it. I did the other side of the car, the driver's side, exactly what I'm doing in this video. I did that this evening. Um, the driver's side was not nearly as damaged on the floor, though. So um, that actually should go a little better. And hopefully, anyway, um, I, didn't, I didn't weld it on yet. So... You're going to hear me in the last clip of this video that you're watching. Sorry, my videos suck. I'm all over the place. But anyways, I'm going to talk about pop rivets in a minute. And that's what I'm waiting to do on the driver's side. But somehow I've misplaced my pop rivet gun. So it is what it is. But here we are. More cardboard templates. And yeah, it's, it's going pretty well. And here I am with my trusty grinder uh, cutting which I'm going to guess that before this project is done, that grinder is going to go flying into my knee at some point, and we're probably going to see some, like, I don't know, like whatever you want to call it, inside knee matter, um, you know, cartilage or bone or something, because this thing likes to kick back at me. I don't know if it's just a matter of the blades I'm using or what, but probably just a matter of time. I ain't hating, though. It is what it is. No big deal. Um... So, the, the way you're going to see me put this on in a minute here, it, uh, for the most part it stays like that, but I end up cutting the, uh, the one side on an angle because it just it wasn't fitting flat enough for my liking. And anyway, I, just, I do what I got to do to make it a little better. Um, I think I'm going to go buy a sanding wheel for this um they've got ones that are like sandpaper 
so that when I'm doing the body work, I don't really want to gouge in with the with the grinder so much as much as removing the rust. So anyway, I think I'm going to go get one of those and see if that does better. And yeah, I'm, uh, I'm still having a lot of fun with this. Um, the floor jack for holding up these panels, by the way, that's a black thing there you see is uh, just a floor jack. And uh, that was perfect. It puts just the right amount of pressure because you can adjust it. So here we go, Mr. McUgly Weld. Um, Kind of still just figuring it out as I go. Uh, you know, kind of tack it on, grind it down, weld it a bit more, grind it down. Um, yeah, it's one of those things where, like, I really wish I had, like, just a kind of a local buddy or something that knew what the hell he was doing to show me on it. But ultimately, I'm getting there. And with the addition of rivets... Um, which we'll be discussing in just a few minutes here. Um, yeah, it's definitely, I think it's helping. So, yeah, I'm having fun, and I hope you guys are somewhat enjoying watching this. And there's my beautiful weld. <laughs> uh, yeah, it is what it is, right? And besides, who said welds in a wheel well have to be that pretty anyway? And then um, I'm trying to get good at it here so that I can be a little bit better at it when it comes time for welding the body because I'm thinking about welding the fenders to the rockers. And then there's like a front, uh, I don't know what the hell it is anyway, it connects between the bumpers under the grill and stuff. Thinking about doing a little welding in there and then some fiberglass and trying to just make it look like a solid... Uh, piece. I don't know. I'll show you on a video anyway. And we can figure it out together. I don't know. Anyway, we're going to clip back into a little more footage here. And uh, I'll try to get another video up soon. And here we are. Fast forward a bit. Sorry, I didn't record it. It was just a little bit tight working quarters to uh, try to do all this. But anyway, I ultimately went and got some rivets for the rivet gun. Just got in trust my welds, even though I ended up coming back over and welding everything as good as I could, could. And nothing was moving after I did that. And then I was like, you know what? Why not just be better safe than sorry and pick, put a couple of rivets in. So there's like three or four rivets in here, another two in here. And then uh, for shits and giggles, we put some over here, just two in here, even though like this was not moving anywhere. I was rocking the whole car off of this panel. And then I went over it with some seam sealer, uh, which hopefully the rocker guard stuff covers, but I guess we'll see. And then um, go underneath here. And sorry if I can line the camera up. Got this all done too. And once again, I welded the whole seam and then still put rivets in anyway. Um, it seems solid. Like it doesn't seem like it's going to go anywhere, so... Let's hope for the best and continue on to the next thing.